Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. This legal drama continues. Plaintiff says Ripple's quote unquote twisted response to XRP lawsuit undermines US Securities Act. Oh, those wascally Ripple employees. Up to no good. And uh, so I'm going to run through that. Uh, I've got an article from Alex Cobb's website, the XRP Daily, which he titled, Ripple announces new Singapore office, everything you need to know about Swell. Which, of course, is fascinating for those of you that are unaware. Uh, Swell this year indeed is in Singapore. So they kind of line those things up. Um, I've got good news about uh, an XRP community member on Twitter coming back after his account being uh, just permanently suspended. Can you even call it suspended then? Um, uh, Twitter, uh, they thought it was uh, some sort of... Sca I'll, I'll explain the specifics. I, I kind of covered the story previously, but I'll talk about it briefly again. But anyway, the uh, point is, uh, a valued XRP community member is back, and I just wanted to highlight it. And uh, last thing I'm going to cover in this video is something that I found fascinating, because look, I like this guy. I like Peter Schiff. He, he's, he's fun. He's just wrong about crypto. He's horrendously wrong about crypto, but I like this guy. So this is from Cointelegraph. Peter Schiff, China's gold-backed crypto would be bearish for Bitcoin. Indeed. And then he starts talking about Max Kaiser here. So before we get going, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, I think you're a pretty gosh darn cool person. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Um, it'll, you know, we can become best friends over time, can we not? Tell each other our deepest and darkest secrets. And, uh, and high five. Let's dig into this first piece now. Plaintiff says Ripple's twisted response to XRP lawsuit undermines U.S. Securities Act. The plaintiff in a lawsuit accusing Ripple of selling XRP as an unregistered security says the company's request to drop the lawsuit would undermine the Securities Act. In September, Ripple filed a motion stating that the plaintiff, Bradley Sostak, waited too long to file his case and should have done so within three years of the initial offering of XRP, which took place in 2013. Uh, the Sustex legal team has now responded and says the fact that Ripple continues to sell XRP invalidates the statute of, of limitations. Okay, so look, cl clearly I don't believe for a moment that there is a single chance in hell that XRP is actually a security. Now, on the point of this particular legal position that they're taking, again, Sostak's legal team has now responded and says the fact that Ripple continues to sell XRP invalidates the statute of limitations. I'm not a lawyer. I have literally no idea if that's true. All I can say is that it makes no damn sense. The concept of XRP being a security, a security of what? Of Ripple, then what about uh, all the exchanges? Like, like for instance, there's Coinbase. That's a United States-based a blockchain firm it's a cryptocurrency exchange what I mean, it, it, what about that uh, is it the security of coinbase too like it just it makes no sense and, uh, anyway so here's a quote the statute of repose does not Im immunize new offerings of unregistered securities like the ones a defendants continue to conduct anew to this day defendants twisted application of the statute of repose would undermine the securities act's uh, very purpose to provide investors with full disclosure of material information concerning public offerings of securities and commerce to protect investors against fraud and <clears throat> through the imposition of specified civil liberties to promote ethical standards of honesty and fair dealing. Uh, this is completely, completely nonsensical to me. And I, look, I, I'm going to predict this, okay? This is going nowhere. Like this, no XRP absolutely is not a security. If you look, uh, you know, from a regulatory perspective, that progress is actually being made in other corners of the world. For instance, uh, over uh, the UK, there's the Financial Conduct Authority, which uh, which recognizes XRP as a uh, utility token. And so, hey, step in the right direction. Indeed, there is a real utility to be had here, and uh, just. The XRP ledger, it's completely decentralized. It, it just is. It's, the XRP ledger is more decentralized than Bitcoin, and given that's the case, it just there's, there's no pro and there's no promise on top of that from Ripple uh, for performance in terms of XRP price. That, that has never happened. It just doesn't make a damn bit of sense to me. So I think this all goes away. I just They're going to go through the whole legal rigmarole, and then it will one day go bye-bye. I look forward to that. 
I also so I want to say a shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf. So this next thing I'm going to cover, um, I actually first got this news uh, from XRP Crypto Wolf, who retweeted uh, this from Ripple. Uh, the Ripple tweet states, uh, "The Lion Dance brings good fortune to our new Singapore office, just in time for swell by Ripple." And here you have this picture, uh, presumably at their new uh, office in in Singapore. Uh, now here's the piece from the XRP Daily Alex Cobb's website. Which is, again, titled, Ripple announces new Singapore office, everything you need to know about Swell. Which I very much look forward to. I wonder what surprises they might be dropping. Because don't forget, Swell last year. Okay, I don't know. I'm not even going to talk about the potential of a price pump again. Like, that's been brought up in news articles. I've talked about it a couple times recently. But just in terms of, could there be big news coming out of this? Well, just consider that last year, uh, Swell, run by Ripple... Uh, that they use the occasion on day one to announce the production version of X Rapid, now known as On Demand Liquidity. They announced that it was going live, and f- in fact, uh, it was already live by the time they announced it. I think they had done their very first transaction with the production version just earlier that morning, uh, you know, from the U.S. Uh, to Mexico corridor, if memory serves. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, so Ripple just expanded their team in Southeast Asia by setting up camp in Singapore, which is an incredibly smart move considering that 50% of Ripple's customers are in Southeast Asia. Uh, this region is developing rapidly in blockchain adoption compared to the United States. Uh, the largest bank in Singapore, uh, DBS Bank, will be a keynote speaker at Swell. Uh, Swell is kicking off on November 6th at 3 p.m. PST and will be the start time of my swell coverage again this is alex cobb fellow xrp youtuber so he writes my swell coverage marathon a live stream on my youtube channel um also i would like to add that i have a source who is attending the swell event and will be feeding us information during the stream that should be fun though (laughs) um now what you need to know is that there is there will be a no swell live stream because essentially it is a private invite only customer event which indeed is true womp womp However, Ripple's Twitter account uh, will be active with posts of videos, photos, quotes, and potentially announcements. Now, I will say this. Even though there's not going to be a a live stream at Swell, uh, there's certainly been no word of it, and I suspect that that's just going to be the case. Videos from the last two Swells, and this is only the third one ever, uh, third annual Swell, uh, there were videos that that came out of the event. So I I am expecting to to get some uh, interesting video clips to uh, watch and dissect. Um, a lot of XRP community members are attending Swell this year, such as Digital Asset Investor, Crypto Eddie, Brad Kimes, Mr. B, and their Twitter feeds will be filled with everything going on at Swell uh, event as well. Although we don't have a live stream, we will get full coverage on all the information released at Swell. So indeed, that did that first day, I, I imagine that um, that will be the most I have ever refreshed my Twitter feed. So I will be looking for information from all of them, anything that they're going to let out, and I look forward to, to, to covering as the information, uh, what's current at Swell, becomes available. Now, Alex Cobbs get, gets into the idea of price. So check this out. He wrote, the price of XRP? Question mark. Who knows? Let's just see what we hear from Swell and see what the XRP price is during the event. Uh, We are having quite a major battle at 30 cents that has been about two weeks long. So if it breaks to the upside, we may go flying. So, and a lot of, indeed, I've covered this recently. I'm not a technical analyst guy. I don't offer price predictions. I just share other people's opinions. But indeed, there have been a lot of chart analysts that have kind of been sharing the sentiment that if it gets anywhere from like the 31 to 33 cent range, uh, that's kind of like all bets are off at that point. And let's just see what happens. But I don't know. I just, I, I still, look, anything can happen in crypto, but even if, if the price goes up, I, I doubt that I'll be convinced that it's because of swell. You know, I, and I didn't even buy into the idea that uh, there was a swell price pump last year. I just think that's because there was the rumor about X Rapid, but there you go. So check this out. This is good news. XRP Boy was one of, <clears throat> excuse me, one of several XRP community members whose, whose account was uh, permanently suspended. You know, it's, it, it was terminated. It just was. And I, I think we kind of figured out what happened. It was Twitter bots did it, basically. So, um, and, and I don't know this definitively. I'm just going to share with you the thoughts from what people have been stating in the community. But there was a Stuart XRP. He was one of them also, and I, I talked about him on the channel. And so he, he was notified. It seemed like an automated letter from Twitter stating that his account uh, was bye-bye forever from Twitter. They just completely got rid of it. Uh, for uh, impersonating somebody else, you know? And I think what was happening, so there are a lot of legitimate 
that's legitimate. That's the bad way to word it. So there are a lot of scam accounts that mimic real profiles, and then they try and piggyback off of individuals, you know, who have traction and have, are just known within the XRP community, have have a lot of followers. And so there are these spam accounts, spam scam accounts that will do various things. And so Twitter, they they are trying to you know put the kibosh on that, and that's all well and good. But it seems like several of uh, these uh, individuals with real accounts. They were identified as impersonators, and Twitter has done nothing to resolve this. Like, it's just unfortunate because I don't remember exactly how many followers um, XRP Boy had when uh, his account went bye bye, but it was definitely over ten thousand. I know that, and so he just started back up. He's got one thousand two hundred twenty-five followers. So if you like to support the XRP community, I just wanted to let you know uh, his new handle is at boy underscore XRP. If you care to follow, um, I just found out about this for recording, so I sure as hell did and retweeted uh, this out. Uh, well, I didn't retweet this one. There was a, a different one on the same topic from, I think it was XRP Deal. Anyway, but uh, Real XRP Boy tweeted this out and, uh, to Galgatron. He writes, Mr. Galg, thank you so much for those kind words. Uh, and he's got a screen grab. Appreciate you trying. Sucks, but it is what it is. Took a little time off, recouped, and I'm ready to throw a couple of jabs at Bitcoin again. And he's got, he's got the laughy emoji. So he seems to be in good spirits despite all this, but I tell you, that would be kind of like Look, if you, because look, think about how much time he spent contributing to the XRP community, building a following, and then it was just unfairly taken. That's disappointing, and it's just, it's just to just, just think you can have a legitimate account, spend years building a following, and then have something like this happen with no recourse. It's kind of a scary concept. I wouldn't care for that. Anyway, and then Galgatron responded, "Help me out. I need to know it's you. What was the topic of our last direct message?" And then XRP boy wrote. We never direct messaged. I've always S-word on Bitcoin with you in public, LOL. So there you go. And then Galgatron wrote, and XRP boy is back. Nice to have you back, brother. And it is, it is indeed good to have you back, good sir. You know, I'm going to retweet this again. I feel bad that that happened to you and everybody else in the XRP community whose accounts were just wrongfully taken from. I just really, really steams my vegetables. All right, uh, next here, uh, here's a tweet from Cryptomaniac101 who tweeted out, XRP has been setting records on day-to-day basis now on XRP slash MXN liquidity index. And so I don't have a bunch to talk about on this. I just wanted to highlight this. And you can see here it is, November 5th. That's today, all-time high in that quarter, right? All right, last piece here, and then I will wrap up the video. Peter Schiff, China's gold-backed crypto would be bearish for Bitcoin. Uh, China launching a digital counterpart the yuan backed by gold puts Bitcoin at a disadvantage, veteran gold bug Peter Schiff claims. In a tweet on November 2nd, Schiff, notorious for his cynicism when it comes to Bitcoin, attempted to counter criticism of his stance by a Kaiser Report host, Max Kaiser. Um, according to at Max Kaiser, I'm an idiot because I think gold is better money than Bitcoin, he wrote. A shift also repeated his oft-quoted idea that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. And this uh, this quote I found fascinating, so check this out. He also claims uh, China is about to launch a cryptocurrency backed by gold. This is bullish for gold and bearish for Bitcoin. A crypto backed by gold is much better than one backed by nothing. And to me, that's just a completely bogus argument, but Peter doesn't know what he doesn't know. If you think conceptually... Gold. You know, why, why does it have value? Well, there are a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is, in fact, that, of course, limited supply, but uh, it can be used for stuff. To what degree? Okay. But even if it's if there is utility, that will give, especially since there's a limited supply, gives you know, people that purchase gold confidence that it will be, in theory, perpetually valued, right? Makes sense. Because um, you can do stuff with it, right? And it's also got a long track record. Uh, that's certainly fair to say. So, but it's it's not backed by anything. Because you think about like the the dollar, dollar, the United States dollar used to be backed by gold, and it's not. You know, it's not anymore. But if you think about uh, gold, but then what's gold backed by? It's like this. You get to this point where you regress enough, and you just realize, wow. Eventually, the answer is nothing. There's always going to be something out there because of. If something's backed by something, what about that? What's that thing backed by after that? And you just go down that path. And eventually, as it's the case with gold, it's just got a market value. And the fact that Peter doesn't see that it's reasonable and makes sense for cryptocurrencies to have their own market value not backed by something like gold, it just shows that he he doesn't, he literally doesn't understand the value. And then you can see he debates people like, uh, you know, Anthony Pompliano. God, I like, I like Anthony Pompliano too. 
but uh, he's not getting the proper story. In fact, he's, look, Peter Schiff has publicly stated the biggest thing is he doesn't get the purpose of it. Like, what, And so it just goes back to my entire investment thesis, which is that utility matters. And he doesn't understand that businesses, and especially in the case of XRP, need XRP, a decentralized cryptocurrency, in order to continue with their, their business models. That's real-world utility. Utilizing this technology... Uh, it just it, it didn't exist, you know, it, you know, a decade ago Bitcoin was created. And so it's changing things, certainly. But of course there should be an open market value, and he just doesn't see that. Anyway, but that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!